you guys. Josh at the out here in Singapore. And thank you so much for joining me on the Night Owl podcast. As always, you guys, I am grateful for all of you joining from wherever you are in the world, whether you watch this or listen to us on a shuffle, whether you are going in order, if you're taking notes, if you're not taking notes, if it's just, you know, something to keep you awake for a little while. I hope it keeps you awake. I'm not sure. Um, I'm grateful. I really am. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you're listening. And if Nothing else, I hope this is entertaining enough for you to give um, a second thought about some of these concepts that I'm talking about, or even better, if it's able to give you a little bit of the push you needed to get something done, or the permission you needed to to be yourself a little bit more, even though it doesn't seem appropriate in your current circumstances. Whatever the case may be, I'm hoping this helps, and I really do appreciate you listening in. Now, today, I wanted to talk to you about the fact that um, I came across a quote by Dr. Sebi Approved. Now, I'm a big Dr. Sebi fan. I didn't know about him um, until recently, maybe in the last four or five years because of a friend of mine, but I believe in the work that he was doing, and I see more and more how it's actually helped me in my own life. Now, he is a natural healer. He talks about um, alkalizing your body, making sure that you feed your body the kind of nutrients that it needs to rebuild itself rather than feeding stuff just to be full for the moment and then like eating again later while it causes uh, extended mucus production, gas production in your system that upsets your colon and your, your digestive tract where you have gas or diarrhea or constipation of any sort. It should be a little bit more balanced middle of the road where you have you know good bowel movements you feel good about yourself you do have enough energy throughout the day and I just I just like the way he talks about those kinds of ideas so obviously I was following his page when I came across a quote that he says that true healers don't heal you they teach you how to heal yourself and I love that concept that sentiment mostly because I know I can't heal you I can't do the work for you I can't you know reset your clock I can't reset your memories I can't erase anything I mean hypnotherapy sounds great and everything but eventually you're gonna have to deal with what it is that happened to you why it happened to you what you understand of what happened to you and how you've been applying it in your life going forward and how it affects every one of your decisions so these are the kinds of things that I can't do for you But I can definitely teach you how to notice and be more self-aware and understand that what you tell yourself shapes your entire reality, which also means that if you tell yourself one thing, you can always tell yourself a completely different story. It's just up to you to decide what it is that you want things to mean to you and how it is that you want to proceed. And you need to be able to pick out when you're having destructive thoughts and stop the spiral when it does happen. So these are the kinds of things that I truly believe in. And I love that Dr. Sebi's page happened to pop that up today because I've been thinking about how it is that I like to teach. I I can't teach people um, math without showing them why the connections are the way that they are what they are to understand of the relationship between each of the numbers on any given sum or you know mental equation they need to see what each of the symbols mean and understand what the relationships are and then proceed from there to calculate what happens next you know what i mean so in the same token as with math, same with emotional intelligence, same with how you understand what happens to you in life, I want for people to understand that it is in their hands. They have the power to heal themselves if they only know what to look for, how to heal themselves. Uh, Dr. Sebi was very good about teaching why certain plants are not considered alkalized or natural. They're actually GMO'd. The way he described what plantains actually looked like originally before it was uh, genetically modified, how uh, garlic is a hybrid, not an actual like a, a naturally occurring vegetable uh, in in the earth. How certain foods are so modified now that they almost don't have any nutrition left. How um, you know how to alkalize your body when you're taking in certain types of foods or nutrients that aren't as beneficial as you once thought they were. And it's it's just amazing how he teaches all of that information, and then it's up to you to put it to good use or not. I mean, he continues to teach and he does create um uh what is it supplements that will actually help you with your healing journey but it's up to you to take them it's up to you to be consistent it's up to you to notice when you're kind of drifting away from an alkalized um an alkaline uh diet versus sticking to the plan now it doesn't mean that you have to do this all the time it's it's like your version of healthy and as you get more and more healthy you will learn that you know you can't tolerate certain types of food anymore because your body is used to a purer form or a more uh, healthful um beneficial source of food so basically it's almost like that with love as well 
if you only know a toxic kind of love, you're not going to accept anything but things that resemble that, resemble that toxic kind of love because that's your only definition. But I can teach you that there are different ways to show love and different ways to receive love. And you can learn to become aware of how it is that you like to show love versus how it is you like to receive love. And all of that information put together will help you decipher what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You can pick apart all of your old you know, memories. I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Pick apart your old memories and see what worked and what didn't work. When did you light up in those relationships? And when did you feel stifled and stuffed in a corner and unseen and unheard and unappreciated? All of those things are bits and pieces of a bigger jigsaw puzzle almost. Like these are little bits and pieces that you're trying to put together and you don't know how they all fit yet, but you know where they go. You know what color they are. And it's up to you to eventually try and figure it all out in order for you to block relationships that aren't so great for you and encourage relationships that do feel good to you. And eventually you have more peace. The idea being that you stop pretending to be something that the community wants you to be versus who you actually are. You stop putting up fronts and trying to please people. There's a lot of trauma that's created in the in the process of trying to avoid getting into trouble or trying to avoid pain. Um, so in instead of trying to avoid pain and that's how you live your life, instead, if you can find your way into situations where you've chosen the people who are around you, or if you don't have a choice in them, you limit the amount of interaction you have between those people because maybe it's painful to you. And you, for the most part, are yourself in every given situation. There will be some times where it's not appropriate to be yourself. There will be some times where you have to be the more... Um, polite version of yourself or the more PG version of yourself, which is also okay as long as you're not pretending too much. Does that make sense? So in that regard, I feel like as a healer, my job is not to heal you. My job is to help you reveal parts of yourself and understand what those parts mean to you and discover what health feels like to you, how you learn to light up and open up to all of life's miracles and life's experiences because you're operating from love rather than from fear. You're not shrinking away from life anymore. You're actually opening to expand to it, to contribute to it, to create for it. And this is the kind of level of of healing that I want to be able to give the world. And while I can't put hands on you and heal you, that's not my purpose at all. I can hold up a mirror and show you what I see and help you discover what parts of you you don't like and why you don't like them and help you reframe that so that you can learn to love yourself in that aspect or at least until you find a way to make it better, more brighter, more vibrant, um, the way you see fit, not the way other people have told you is appropriate uh, according to community guidelines or to fashion of the now or the materialistic um idea of what beauty is or what success is i need you guys to define it for yourself so with that regard i really truly believe true healers don't heal you they teach you how to heal yourself and that makes me feel good about the work that i'm doing i'm not over here telling you i can cure you but i definitely can teach you some things about yourself if you're open to really seeing you for who you are as you are accepting yourself is the number one step to walking through this world without being upset or frustrated by all the opinions around you and trust me there's plenty of opinions if social media hasn't taught you that i don't know what you're going to learn so i hope this helps if you have any questions please drop them in the comments below but in the meantime you guys i want you to learn to love yourself because when you love yourself nothing anyone says to you will really matter that much because you love yourself you've accepted yourself as you are and that should be plenty all right you guys i love you i'll catch you later bye